What's good guys, Tyler back, GK Goal Remy. So today's video of me teaching you guys how you can save a lot more 1v1s just by doing something as simple as this. So I got the idea for this video after watching an interview that our friends at Unisport did with Courtois where he's just going over how he prefers to deal with 1v1 and breakaway situations. And there's gonna be a ton of really good information that you guys can learn from this video. But today I'm just gonna be focusing on the first thing he says he does whenever he realizes that he's about to face a 1v1 or breakaway. My first thing is if I see him coming and uh, for example, I, I would always drop first back to the five yard, mm -hmm. like the five meter. And, and stop here so that obviously he doesn't see he can chip me or or that's too easy. Now for the rest of this video, I'm just gonna be showing you guys some clips and breaking down some examples of why the first thing you should be doing when you're about to face a breakaway is to drop back to your six. So the first example, I'm gonna show you guys why you don't wanna get stuck on top of your 18, just like this keeper is right here. Cause the problem at this point is if you're just stuck on your 18 is this striker knows exactly what he wants to do. And I'm just gonna let this clip play out for you guys so you guys can see the end result. One on one with the goalkeeper, chance to confirm the points. Now he gets McGinley, takes it around McGinley. McGinley takes him down. That'll be a penalty and reaching into the back pocket, McGinley will be sent off. So like Courtois said, you do need to worry about being chipped in situations like this, but a huge issue also is, is how easy it is for the striker to just round the keeper. When they're running full speed at you, you're not moving at all, and it just takes one big touch around you, and it's gonna be really, really difficult to recover, as you can see in this situation here. Another issue, like I said before, is you're not forcing the striker to think at all. When he sees the keeper this far out, he knows immediately that I'm gonna round the keeper, he knows exactly what he wants to do, and it makes it so much easier to execute any kind of move if three or four seconds before you even make it, you know exactly what you're gonna do. It's just, it's not putting any pressure on the striker, which is the only way you're gonna gain any sort of advantage in 1v1 situations. So here's a very similar situation. Striker finds himself all alone, but this time when the keeper realizes that he's not gonna be able to cut out this through ball as a sweeper keeper, he immediately drops back to his six yard box. And you can see striker slows up a little bit, and this is exactly what you want. You want to get the striker thinking because right now at this point, he has no idea what he's going to do and he's starting to think a bit too much. And that's when you guys know people make mistakes is when you start to overthink things. So the keeper went back to his six, charges out. Not a good attempt by the striker on the finish, but a lot of that just put on the pressure by the keeper. He does really good making himself big and coming up with a huge save. Because if you guys watch this clip again, you can really see how hesitant this striker is. He's not convincing. He doesn't know exactly what he wants to do. And this is 100% on just the keeper's positioning of dropping back and then charging out at the perfect time. And of course, really good technique with the spread save. So here's a bit of a different situation. You can see already where the keeper is right now. And just notice how he starts to drop back to his six as this really good ball gets played in right here. So he gets drawn to six, gets set, and again, right now, the striker needs to make a decision. He's not just going to shoot right now. He feels a little bit of pressure from his defender, and he ends up taking a heavy touch. Keeper sees that as a good chance to close out the angle. Defender does a really good job dropping back on the goal, and overall, just great defensive play by everyone here. Something dropping back does also is gives your defenders more time to make the recovery. So right here, keeper drops back really well. Maybe if he's too high up here, the striker can get a little chip right about now, but... He's in a really good position. Striker's definitely feeling a lot of pressure from this defender and it just forces the off target shot. Or maybe if the goalkeeper's too far up in this situation, maybe the striker takes another big touch right here and tries to go around the keeper and then try to slot it at the tough angle. But since he stays home, his only real option is to try to take a really tough angled shot with a lot of pressure by this defender. And you guys can see end result, not even a shot on target. I mean, it's just really, really smart play by the goalkeeper here and obviously great recovery run by the defender. And sometimes you might not even need to charge out when the striker's all alone. I mean, really good touch by the striker here. Goalkeeper just sitting on the six. This time he doesn't even decide to charge and striker again, slows up a little bit, feels a bit of pressure from this defender and just gets a weak shot off. Keeper makes really good reaction, reads him really well. But you can bet if in this situation, the keeper's on his 18, right about here. Chip's obviously gonna be on, especially with a half bouncing ball, but most likely it's gonna be the same result that we saw in the first clip where it easily just rounds him. But instead, again, slows him up, really good save. 
I mean, a lot of times you do want to charge out in these situations, but again, he's putting the pressure on the striker, making him think, and that's what we want. We want the strikers to be overthinking things. I mean, it really is just crazy how effective this strategy can be that it even works on 2v1. So right here, keeper stays home. Right there, you can see the strikers taking a glance back to see where their defender's on. He's not 100% focused on the goal since he knows he needs to make a decision and he just takes a little bit too long. Defender comes in, applies pressure, forces a bad pass, Keeper makes a great reaction save, and it turns what should be just a pretty much open goal into a huge save. I mean, you just play this back, you can see he takes big touch. I mean, he is flying right now, but then he starts to slow up just a little bit right there. Again, just force the strikers to think, make them make a mistake. So that's the video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, GK. Also, check out GoalRemyGK.com. Ton of gloves you guys get from AV Auto with other training equipment as well. Till next time, peace. Run that city out in Kansas, slamping in the cut like bandage. I do damage, vandal handle me. These bosses cannot manage me. I am the king of canopy, so rumble in the jungle like a